What's up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. I'm Katie and on today's video we're going to be going through our May 2023 budget. Yes, it's already time to do our May budget. That is crazy to me but here we are. So in this video or for this budget we're going to be tightening up a little bit because um, we paid our car off in March and I kind of took April as like a break, I guess you could say, and I didn't put as much money towards debt in April. But now I want to get back on the um, debt train and start putting a lot of money towards debt again. Now we do still have um, some savings goals that we're trying to meet, so we will still put it, be putting money towards savings, but I am trying to up the amount that we're putting towards debt. So this budget is gonna be a little bit tighter than normal. It's not anything crazy tight, like it still um, gives us some wiggle room and some room to enjoy life because I do believe that you should enjoy life while you're on a debt payoff journey, especially a journey that's as long as ours. Um, if you're new here, we're paying off a six figure debt. So that's not something that we can accomplish in six months time. It's gonna take us several years to do that. So we need to allow ourselves a little bit of room in the budget to enjoy our money. So let's go ahead and jump into the numbers. So starting with our income, I'm budgeting $51.50 for each of my husband's paychecks. Um, he does get paid bi-weekly, and that's really the only income that we're expecting. So that's a total of $10,300 that we're budgeting for the month of May. So the first category that we like to budget is savings and investing because savings and investing is very important. So our savings challenges, um, most of this money is going to go towards my 100 envelope challenge. So I'm budgeting $1,100 for savings challenges, and hopefully most of that will go to the 100 envelope challenge. And the reason that I'm putting most of this towards that challenge is because I want to get it finished in June. So our 100 envelope challenge is funding our emergency fund. And once we finish that 100 envelope challenge, we should be at a $10,000 emergency fund, which gives me a lot of peace of mind or which will give me a lot of peace of mind when we hit that goal. So I really want to have that finished within the next two months. And then we can go hit our debt even harder at that point. But that's why we're putting so much towards saving challenges this month. I'm also putting $125 towards my own retirement. My husband also um, contributes to retirement, but he does it through his employer um, through like a 403B. So in total for savings and investing, we have $1,225 going um, to savings and investing. Next is our debt. So all we have left are my husband's student loans and um, I'm sure most of you guys know that the student loans in the U.S. are on a payment pause, so you do not have to make payments right now, and no interest is accumulating. So that's why I have zero on all of these student loans except for Fed Loan 2. So Fed Loan 2 is his smallest student loan, so this is the one that we're going to be working on knocking out first. So we're budgeting $1,300 towards this loan, and I don't know if you guys would have remembered my April budget, but I only budgeted $700 to put towards this loan in April. So we're trying to bump it up quite a bit now. Um, and I need to get used to paying a lot of money towards the student loans again, because for a couple of years now, we haven't had to pay them. We've still been paying small amounts on them, but not anything this big. And yes, we were working on paying off other debt. That's why we weren't putting so much towards the student loans. And as you can see, we did get our other debts paid because this is all we have left. However, I need to get back into the habit of setting aside large amounts for this loan because the pause ends in September. And our minimum payments on these loans are $1,500. I think it's actually a little bit over that, but um, at least $1,500. And I'm not used to paying that much on these loans now. So I got to get back in the habit of that. So this is kind of like practicing for that, but also we do want to put more money towards debt. So it's a win-win all the way around. So total going to debt is just $1,300 because we're just paying the one loan. So next we're doing our bills and fixed expenses. So for our mortgage, we're budgeting 2349, which is higher um, than it used to be because we got a letter last month saying that our mortgage would go up in May. So we used to pay 2253 and now it's going up to 2349, which is $96 more than we used to pay. And it's just going up because um, our house value went up, which means our taxes are going up. So we have to start paying more money into our escrow in order to cover the taxes and that is included in our mortgage payment. So $23.49 for our mortgage. For our phones, we're doing 108, internet is um, 81, trash is 50, and then streaming services that we use are 108 total. I just kind of lumped them together, but that's $26.96 in total for our bills and fixed expenses. All right, moving on to our envelopes or um, variable expenses, whatever you want to call these. Basically for these funds, 
I put money into them every month and I usually spend out of them every month, but I try not to spend the whole amount and whatever is left over rolls into the next month. So our first one is school. This is school for my um, three boys. Only two of them are in school now, but um, next fall, my youngest will be starting school as well. So we'll have to be paying a little bit more for that. I'm budgeting the 750 because their tuition is due in July. So 750 for that this month. Um, for food and household, we're only doing 1250 this month. And I say only, I know this is still a lot of money for most people for food, but we've been doing like 1350. Um, and even in like February and March, I think I gave myself 1500 just because we had extra money. And then the way that the um, weeks fell, I had to go to get groceries more often. So we're cutting back on the groceries a little bit. Um, I'm a little bit nervous about it, to be honest with you, because we struggle to stay within our grocery budget, but we've been doing better lately. And I do think um, it's realistic for us to be able to cut back just a little bit. I don't want to cut back too much all at once because I want to be like realistic with our spending. But I do know that once the student loan pause ends and we have to start sending more to our student loans, um, I know that we're going to have to cut back somewhere and groceries is just one of the biggest expenses that we have that we can realistically cut back on. So I'm going to try to practice now cutting back on groceries. If we go over and we can't um, put as much to debt because we went over on groceries, I'm not going to stress about it, but I do want to try to hit this number and hopefully go even lower because I just don't know how we are going to um, be able to pay for everything if we don't cut back on several areas where we're spending. So we're gonna practice this month. That's why we're tightening up the budget now so that we can practice now before September comes and we have to start paying those student loans again. So 1250 going to food and household, wish me luck. I hope we can do it. Um, for eating out, we're doing 250, which is a little bit less than we normally do, not too much less, but um, we should have money for from April rolling over into this fund. So. It should be fine and I do want to try to cut back a little bit on eating out as, as well. We don't eat out a ton. We are a family of five though. So when we do eat out, it's pretty expensive, um, especially if we go to like a sit down restaurant, which we don't do often. But um, I do like to be able to eat out like once a week if we, if we would like to. But if we have to cut this out further, then we will. But um, I don't think eating out once a week is like terrible, so. That's what we're gonna try to do, but if we need to cut back even more, then we will. For car maintenance insurance, we're only doing $150 because um, we recently changed our car insurance and it's going to be a lot cheaper. So I have most of the money set aside for the next payment that I don't have to pay until November already. So basically I just wanna keep padding this fund in case there's something that we need in the car maintenance um, world or realm. So if something's wrong with our car, I do wanna start keep, I want to keep putting money into this so that we can get it fixed without stressing about it or without using our emergency fund. But I don't feel like I need to be putting like $300 a month into this fund right now since we have most of the money for our car insurance premium and it's not due for quite a while. So 150 for that. For gas, we're doing 225. I'm trying to do a little bit less because we should have some money rolling over from April. For house bills, we're doing 500, which is, again is a little less than we have been doing because we've paid our HOA now and we don't owe it again um, for the rest of the year. So that's why I'm doing a little less on this. For my boys, we're doing 275. This is to cover like their activities or anything else that they might need, like if I have to buy them clothes or shoes um, or if we just want to buy them anything. It also covers their chore money that I pay them. So 275, I'm hoping we can make that work. For Mark, I'm giving him 200, which is kind of the normal amount that we give um, for our personal spending. And then for myself, I'm only doing 125 because I canceled my hair appointment in April. So I have quite a bit of money left from April and I wanted to cancel that appointment so that I didn't have to give myself as much in May because I do wanna put more money towards debt. So for me, I would rather put more, more money towards debt than have spending money. But I did give myself some spending money because I do have to cover my giveaways that I do on the channel and my Canva subscription. And then I wanted a little bit of extra money to build up for my next hair appointment that will be in June. So I still gave myself some money, but um, less than I would normally give myself. For holiday and gift, we're doing 500, which is a lot, but we have Mother's Day. I already told Mark I do not want anything for Mother's Day, but I don't know if he'll listen. But we have to buy um, something for my mom, um, his mom, and then my son Liam, his birthday is at the very beginning of June. So most of the gifts that we buy him, we'll be buying in May. 
And then um, if we like go out to eat anywhere or do something special for his birthday, we can probably use that in the June budget. But most of his gifts will be coming out of the May budget. So I just wanna make sure I have enough to cover that. If we don't use it all, that's great, but I, we tend to spend a lot on gifts. So I just wanna be prepared and honest with myself. For pet, we're doing 200, which is a little less than we have been doing, but we're doing really good on not spending so much out of the pet budget. So I'm gonna see if this works. For house things, we're only doing 175 because we've done a lot of projects lately and I don't think we need as much right now. We're gonna keep building up this fund hopefully so that we can pay for the next project that we want to do. So for dues and subscriptions, we're doing 200, which is actually quite a bit more than we would normally do. Um, we have, I think 175 from April that will be rolled over into May, but I'm adding an extra 200 because my husband wants to pay for the NFL Sunday ticket. And I think if you sign up before June 1st, you get a discount and I think it's $250. So I didn't wanna use all of our dues and subscription money for that, that we already have. So um, we're adding in 200 and we'll only have to use 50 of what we already have. So we'll still have some saved up for the next thing that pops up. Cause I think our Disney plus is due sometime in the summer as well. So I just wanna make sure we have enough money for everything. For our family fund, we're doing 225. This is just for things that we do for fun together as a family. And then for taxes, I'm not budgeting anything. I will put money into this if I get a YouTube check in May, but as of right now, I don't think that's going to happen because you have to meet a $100 threshold and it updates daily. And right now, like the average that I've been making in April, I don't think I'll meet the hundred, um, $100 threshold for May. We'll see, it could change because when I'm filming this, we still have a few days left in April. But right now I don't think that's gonna happen. So I'm not budgeting anything for taxes. And if I do need to put money, from taxes, then we'll obviously have extra income from the YouTube check to cover it, so it'll be fine. For miscellaneous, we're just doing $54, and that's just to cover anything that doesn't fall into another category or if we go over on one category. So hopefully we won't have to use that, but we'll see. So in total for all of our envelopes, um, I'm budgeting $5,079. So that's still quite a bit of money, and I'm hoping we can make this work, but it is less than we have been doing. So we'll see how it works out. So in total for our budgeted income, we have $10,300. Our budgeted expenses also equal $10,300. So that is a balance of $0. So that means we have budgeted every single dollar that we have coming in or that we expect to have coming in. So I just like to do a zero based budget. That's what works for me. If you don't like doing a zero based budget, you certainly don't have to do that, but I like to do that. Um, and as I said before, we have money that rolls over from month to month. So it's not like we spend every single dollar that we have coming in. It's just that we have um, a place to put it and a job for it so that we don't spend it because we think it's just like extra money sitting there. So every dollar is assigned a job. And if we don't spend it, it still stays in that category and rolls over into the next month. That's just how I like to do things. It's been working really well for us and um, different things work for different people. So don't think because I budget a certain way that you have to budget that way. There are lots of different budgeters out there on YouTube and you can certainly, you know, get inspired by anyone or get ideas from anyone, but ultimately you have to do what works for you. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I feel like I was very chatty, but um, I don't know, I'm excited. I hope this works out. I hope we can tighten up our budget a little bit and send more money to debt because I really, really wanna be debt free. And like I said, it's gonna take us a couple of years anyway, and I don't want to draw it out any longer than it needs to be. So give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you wanna see more from me, um, hit that red subscribe button down below and I will see you in the next one. Bye.